Jason, how'd you get started? Uh, you know what? I got started as just this hooligan guy that rode wheelies on everything I could get my hands on. And, uh, you know, I ended up loving it so much, but it was getting me in trouble because I was riding wheelies on the highways and cops were writing me big thousand dollar tickets and it was just a big headache. That was in the West Co on the West Coast? On the West Coast, Southern California. Uh, who were your heroes at the time? Evil Knievel was my hero. <laughs> Biggest hero of all times. The guy was just so uh, so gritty and so passionate and right. so driven. Not even passionate about stunt riding or anything else. He was just so passionate right. of a person. Uh, I, I, we've all seen, I, hopefully we've all seen the clip, the famous clip of uh, you being asked something about Wink 1100 and you said Yeah, who? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wink's, is that true? Did you not know who? Wink I totally. I've known yeah. who Wink Eleven Hundred okay. is for lots and lots of years. Right. And it was, it was a premise yeah. thing. Yeah. Wink is is my buddy, and he has been for yeah. a lot of years. We talk yeah. all the time. It was just a, a jab back because yeah. the guy that asked me that question, who I did not know, yeah, st stood in line at the autograph line and, yeah. and and came to me with that question with ill intent. Yeah. Yeah. And. He was trying to set me up yeah. to get me to go into this argument about, oh, who's the best and blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I know there was a load, it was a loaded question. Yeah. So that's why I said, wink who? Yeah, yeah and you like, did it perfectly. Yeah, you did so it perfectly. I just, I just did you what really I did. Keep my cool and yeah. you know what? But yeah, we're motorcycle family, man. Wink is my yeah. guy and I'm steering away from drama. I and that's what I was doing. And that was that, that was the whole that was back in the whole like East Coast West Coast yeah, day hip hop yeah. drama days. Yeah. That and was, I'm not a Biggie Tupac yeah. guy where yeah. I'm gonna yeah. go yeah. battle with someone. And, yeah. and since Wink is my boy and he's from yeah. New York, so what? Yeah. He blades like me. He rides motorcycles like me. Yeah. He puts his pants on the same way as I do. Yeah. So we're all in this together, as far as I'm concerned. There's yeah. no dividing wall. We're not Mexico and, and yeah. the USA. You know. Yeah. So. Well. Yeah. <laughs> and there's, no, and there's no wall there, but yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, uh, I hear you. I'm not Let's trying to create division. I'm trying to. I like, I'm trying to consolidate and bring everyone together. I happen to love to go to Mexico. I hope. I'd so, I, hope I sure here. do too. <laughs> you describe how you changed the game from what like a guy like Wink was doing? Because you're very different. Mm, how I would mean, you describe it? I, you know what? It, everyone has their part and their role in stunt yeah. riding, I think. Wink 1100 yeah. as well. He's, yeah. he's a big part of... Uh, make sure that goes back in there, bud. Okay. <laughs> um, but, but Wink 1100 is a big integral part of, of stunt riding. Without Wink 1100, there wouldn't be the Rough Rider anthem, and there wouldn't be a lot right, of right, different right, stuff. Right, right. So, for me, it's just uh, I feel like it takes a lot of gears to spin the wheel. Absolutely. And Wink is an integral part of it. Um, I feel like I'm I'm heavily involved in what, where the direction of, of where it went. And for me, um, riding the street only caused me problems. Yeah. So I had to try in my mind to to, to correlate riding wheelies yeah. and making a living or not getting in trouble at least so yeah. to speak yeah. uh, I had to make those two go together yeah. and so I, I just kind of shifted my, my focus and my direction a little sure. bit and we started bringing it to closed course areas but sure. I, I feel like hopefully I, I can inspire others to go out and make a living doing wheelies doing what they love sure. because it's, it's, it's very possible there was no such thing truthfully as closed course stunt riding demos competitions whatever right. you want to call it right. when I started right, right. so the evolution is real, and right. it's possible for anyone to go out and do it. Right. Uh, it's my observation that you are a an, you are a real gymnast, an acrobat, uh, and you happen to use a motorcycle as your piece of ac gym gymnastic equipment. Whereas our boy Wink Eleven Hundred never had that level of athleticism, as much deft control of a motorcycle as he had. You, you stepped up the game in a physical acrobatic way that it's, it was it that changed the game for sure okay yeah I'll, t I'll take that I mean right. I, I'm definitely an absolutely an athlete all, yeah. all around not yeah. just uh, you know gymnastics which yeah. I don't really do um, 
I do headstands, and I can do. I can. You walk do, a but you just road. don't know it. You do yeah, it on a motorcycle. I don't realize <laughs> it, but, um, but I've, I've played every sport sure. out there, sure. and I've excelled at all of them and got bored. Sure. And motorcycles is the only thing that's for me is ever evolving yeah. and keeps my attention and my focus, yeah. and and it and it makes me want to push and see how far the level can go yeah so for me it's a challenge yeah. thing and that's why I'm still doing it 22 yeah. years later yeah. yeah you know I'm still here because I, I love it and I'm yeah. passionate about it and it's ever evolving and it's never boring and and uh, you know accolades to everybody that's ever been a part of stunt riding or the motorcycle world that's involved with stunt riding yeah. and all the sponsors that have supported from way back in the day until current day some of them you know it's just a, it's a beautiful thing to, to, to have create a niche not I'm, I didn't create the niche maybe but to be a part of something that was from its infancy till now well you have been able to professionalize it in a way that guys like Tony D thought he could and just didn't wasn't able to pull it off yeah you know it and that's the thing it takes uh, you have to you have to sit down and formulate a plan yeah and you have to stick to that plan yeah. if you don't stick to that plan then you'll you'll end up deviating and getting off into something else, and maybe I'll do movie stunts, and which I've done a lot of movie stunts and still do, and I'm still a SAG member. Sure. But I, I never deviated from the plan. I yeah. just did other things along the way while I tried to stay on my path. Yeah. How'd you get hooked up with Kawasaki? Uh, in to, back in 2007, I was riding Suzuki's for Suzuki, mm -hmm. but it was a kind of a weird deal they didn't want to do a direct deal with me they hate spending money and i was working with two <laughs> yeah i was working with uh two wheel tuner as you know probably because yep, yep. we go way back yeah yep. and uh i basically did a press deal for the zx14 and they asked me if i wanted to they said wow well, you should ride a zx6 you know and see what you think it's a really great bike we know you're riding a gsxr 600 and i said i'd love it i'd love to try it one and they said we'll get we'll get a bike sent out to you you ride it we'll, get, we'll put it on loan you can ride it for a couple weeks tell us what you think i rode it for two days and went i love this thing called them back and said i love the bike blah 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 and they go well, we'd like to work out a deal and they signed a contract with me right then in 2007 and ever since it's history in the making good deal man keep it rolling all right thank you brother yeah appreciate that man once again And this is how we end the show.